Welcome to another Selfish OS uh, podcast or video cast. And this time around, I want to show you the new features, some of the new prominent features of Selfish OS 2.1.1. This is the early access version 2.1.1.24. And the most prominent new feature, I think, is the new overhauled camera UI. First of all, let me lock the device so it is now locked as you can see here I have to unlock the device with my pin code but I have a new option by default which allows me as you can see here with a small camera icon indicator allows me to swipe up to start the camera which allows me then to take a screenshot um, a, a photo basically not a screenshot a photo and this is the UI of the camera which is um, pretty, I think, standard, just like the Android ones. But um, if you compare it to the previous version, it is a lot that has changed here. First of all, you have two different modes: the video capture mode and the video uh, and the image capture mode, the photo capture mode, and the video capture mode. And you can switch between them by just swiping down, as you can see here. If I let go now, I am in the video taking mode, and it goes to 16 by 9 ratio. If I would like to shoot a photograph, I can just simply swipe up and it's in photo mode again. Of course, I have also the option to long press and hold to choose the position of the shutter button as well. I really like it there, down there. This is now, in, I think, in 4 to 3 or 3 to uh, 2 mode in photo mode. Of course, I can switch the camera by pressing here. Now you can see me here. And I can go back. I have a new slider for the exposure compensation minus two to plus two. I have the option to change the white balance just by pressing here and choose the various different modes of white balance. And of course, I have an option to choose the flash, self timer, ISO, or the various different grids. So if I like this grid here, for example. I can just simply use this. So a nice new overhauled camera experience. I don't have anything to focus on, but you have also a new uh, possibility to autofocus, as you can see here. And this now works much faster than before. So it, um, especially on the devices, just like for example the OLED C, it works pretty pretty damn fast in in terms of autofocus acquiring. Let's see if we can focus on this here. So I think it is not really focused on this here, but as you can see here, this works pretty fine. And if you let go and don't touch the screen, it will go back to automatically focusing. Um, you don't have the option to uh, switch between various different focus modes. Basically, it is now in the global focus everything mode, uh, autofocus mode. And if you press on one uh, screen, it will start focusing on there can take a shot if you don't take a shot and wait a few seconds it will go back into the overall focusing mode and uh, yeah this is we have to like this feature but overall I think the new UI is a great improvement in terms of usability as it yeah, compares more to the iOS or Android world uh, where um, the photo applications just look very similar to this one here uh, this is all you have as options, so of course taking a shot as well. Uh, all the options that you can do in the locked mode even with the um, yeah, photo or camera application. You can go back to the lock screen and then I can unlock the device. Very nice pin code. And show you some new features of the device. Uh, one, of course, is the option if you don't like this gesture to swipe up on the lock screen to go into camera mode, you can, of course, just simply configure this in the gestures, options in settings and turn this option off. And I'm not sure if this option was in there before. This is an option, a sensor option for the LRC at least, which allows you to just simply twist, turn your phone when there's a call to just simply um, mute the call or ignore the call. I'm not sure it, if it's new or if it was in there before. Then, of course, there are some new options as well. Alien Dalvik support has been uh, brought up to date. So Alien Dalvik, the Android runtime, now gained support for showing 
um, more information about an Android application in the settings. If I click on the Android application, for example, you can see now the detailed um, data usage on the device. So the total usage, the app usage, the data usage and the cache usage, which is pretty nice if you'd like to uh, know how much you will gain when you remove the cache, uh, which is a pretty nice option. And then, of course, uh, you have the option if you have an um, Android application, just like, for example, an, a streaming application, just like Spotify, it will now not only allow you to control the player itself, but it will allow you to also um, it will allow you to also see the artist and the song data on the lock screen as well. So if a song in here, let me go to the next one. Let me lock the device. And here you have then the option to pause, uh, skip to the next song, and see also the player, the player's information, just like for example the title and the artist currently playing, which is a pretty nice feature I think for uh, the lock screen. And uh, I think it was not available before. There were only the pause and next buttons, but the uh, song information sometimes was missing. This is now working more reliably in the Android runtime. And of course, there's another feature. Um, besides those, there are stability fixes. For example, if you get a notification in the notification center and you click on it and you have a minimized application, also an Android application running in the background, it sometimes crashed the application instead of starting the application. And this is something that is now fixed in version 2.1.1 as well as the location uh, data options for Android applications. Sometimes they did not get a fix, a GPS fix or a GLONASS fix, and this is now working fine. I've tested it, tested it with uh, OSM, and unfortunately I cannot show you this right now. And then there is um, a new under the hood change for Bluetooth. So if I, let me go back to Bluetooth. Uh, Bluetooth for the Yola C has changed to Blues 5 under the hood, which means that it now supports, for example, the headset protocol or profile is now supported in Pulse Audio with Blues 5, and Blues 5 brings a better Bluetooth support overall in terms of connectivity with various different devices, which is a pretty nice improvement for Bluetooth. Also, the energy usage of Bluetooth is now lowered, and of course, Blues 5 is also um, capable of supporting Bluetooth Low Energy. Unfortunately, the Yola C does not support Bluetooth Low Energy, but the Sony Xperia X, which will be, I think, the next um, device running Safish S, official device running Safish S, uh, will have support for Bluetooth Low Energy, which is, I think, a nice addition. Yeah, let me go to settings. Uh, there is a new option for VPN. As you can see, if I click on new VPN, I have the option now to choose the L2TP and PPTP protocols for VPN, which are now also supported, which is, I think, a nice addition if you'd like VPN. When I go to wireless LAN Wi-Fi support, you have now the option to edit your current Wi-Fi. This was not available before. Um, before, you had to just simply remove all the data uh, from the device from, from the saved uh, Wi-Fi and then re-add all the information. Now you have the option to just simply edit these out in here. And then of course there are new um, there's a new support for Wi-Fi VPA to Enterprise with P how it's called P A P E A P authentication. So if you want to use your safe address device in an enterprise environment Wi-Fi, you have now the option to do so. Let me go back to the notifications view. Here you can see that there, um, the events view, basically the um, appointments, the calendar entries are now simply um, redefined, redesigned. So it will now show you also the time uh, of the event, of the appointment that you made even on the same day, uh, just like those two events in here. And of course, just like before, you can press on an event to go into the calendar and it will show you some more information about this appointment. Yeah, this is basically everything that, uh, or the, not basically everything, there are much, much more under the hood improvements on the uh, overall experience of the device. 
Uh, this is uh, the OLS C device, of course. The, the, the features may be a little bit different on other devices, just like, for example, the Yola One or the Yola Tablet. They don't support, for example, Blues 5. They only support Blues 4, so nothing changed there for them. Um, there are some uh, stuff that got removed, just like, for example, um, I cannot show you this one here, but uh, the Google Talk support was removed because Google Talk simply yeah, ceased to exist. Uh, so uh, they had to remove the Google Talk support, of course, until uh, Google officially also close, closes down the service. You can simply use the XMPP protocol as well with the, all your Google data uh, to uh, use this further on. But I think uh, this is uh, dying out now, so not very important for most users. Uh, these are basically all the prominent features of the new SafeShares version 2.1.1. Uh, it's a minor release, I would say, with uh, under the hood changes, preparation for, I think, the next big version, 2.1.2, which will be the first version that also supports 64-bit, which is important for supporting the 64-bit platform, just like, for example, Sony Xperia X devices. So the next big update, I think, will be the more interesting update. Uh, also in terms of performance, but this one is an also minor good update and improvement uh, which improves the overall experience of Safish S on every device, especially with the Alien Dalvik improvements, but of course also with new VPN support and for the OLSC at least with the better Bluetooth support. I hope you enjoyed this little video demonstration about the Safish S version 2.1.1 .1 improvements and uh, until the next time.